What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video where I'm going to be talking about Mistborn Era 1. Boom, just hit myself in the face. <laughs> so if you're wondering about what covers I'm holding here, these are the newly released covers and I'll be collecting them as they come out. Uh, the fourth one, so the start of Era 2 is not out yet, but have no fear, I will be reading those as well. And I've done vlogs of all the books so far. So I, there's a vlog for Mistborn Book 1, The Final Empire. I'll show them as I go. I have a vlog up, spoiler and spoiler free, for Mistborn Era 1, Book 1 which is actually called The Final Empire in some forms. So there's a spoiler and spoiler free vlog of that. There's a spoiler and spoiler free vlog of The Well of Ascension. And then I just finished a spoiler only vlog of The Hero of Ages. So only watch this vlog if you've read to this point. I found that it got really difficult to vlog that far into the series without talking about spoilers. And so that's what this video is for. I'm going to sort of wrap up my thoughts and feelings about all three books in Era 1. And then I will have a video just like this for Era 2. I haven't decided how and if I'm going to vlog for Era 2. I think I will, or I'll do a review of each book at least. There will be a spoiler section like video of each book rather it's a vlog or review i haven't decided yet but then at the end when i finish all of the mistborn books imagine i'm honing air two right here i will do a wrap-up spoiler free video for all of them hope that makes sense so let me tell you guys a little bit about mistborn if you don't know anything about it and you're coming to this video trying to figure out if you want to read it or not um there is a there's one thing about a main character in this book that you find out very early on about her and I've went back and forth I actually started filming this video and then stopped and then I called my friend Neve and was like is this a spoiler who has read most of book one but I was like is this a spoiler is it not and I got really in my head about it being a spoiler or not being a spoiler because I don't want to ruin the book for anybody and then I stopped filming the video and I was like you know what screw it I'll just warn people that like I am going to mention a mild spoiler it happens within the first like 60 pages of book one. It is a main plot point for the book. It's sort of it told about on the back of the book. Like you already know that a character is going to be misborn. I'm just going to tell you what character, the character name of that person. That's it. Again, you find out in 60 pages of the book, but I feel like I've done my justice of if you don't want to know who that is, even though you'll find out within 60 pages of the first book, First book, yeah, I should have clarified, not like 60 pages into book three. Wouldn't that be a plot twist? Um, you find out in the first book really early on. But if you hate any spoilers at all, even though this isn't really a spoiler, here I go getting into my head, just don't watch this video um, because I'm going to talk about that plot point. So I, if you came here to find out if I love the books, I did. They're my entire personality, and I'm going to share why in the rest of this video. But if you're really, really like stingy about knowing spoilers, just come back after you've read the first 60-ish pages, I guess. So that's my warning and I feel better about my life now because I don't want to ruin anybody's reading. Anyways, okay, so I have went back and forth about how I was going to tell you guys about these books because I've loved them so much that they're my whole personality right now. They're all I can think about. They're like how I view the world. Like these books have had that much influence on me, which I don't think has ever happened in my entire reading career to the point that I went to Brandon Sanderson's website and bought a lanyard because I need a lanyard that is says Mistborn on it because I need everybody to know that it's my, I don't know guys, I just like am so attached to this world and these characters. I just realized I don't have my glasses on and I might have showed you guys the books out of order. <laughs> I'm a mess. <laughs> Hope you guys love me for me. If you're new here, welcome to the chaos. I don't have my glasses on because they keep fogging up. And so I realized I might have showed you guys the books out of order, but whatever, it's fine. Um... Okay, so now let's talk about what these books are actually about. So I can hold up book one because I can actually see that this is book one, new cover. This is the story of, this is really a found family story about a world in which it is covered in ash. There, the sun is red. It is very dystopian-like. Um, also like in just the sense of like the world being very hopeless. It's very divided between the nobility and a group of people called the Ska, who are like basically below the nobility. They're like, do all the crappy jobs. They have like really crappy lives and they like live on the streets and they have no hope. They're very controlled by the nobility. Some really messed up policies, like 
if somebody in the nobility sleeps with a woman who is ska they have to kill them the next day there's just some really messed up policies it's a very sad and hopeless world but within the sad and hopeless world we meet a group of really amazing amazing characters so we have ven who grows up on the street this is all spoiler free except for that one thing that i mentioned earlier but we meet ven who grows up on the streets and um she was raised by her brother Ren and he is no longer in the picture and so she is working for like this criminal underground within this world and she knows that there's something different about her and there's something there's some power within her that the criminal underground lord guy essentially uses for his advantage and treats her like crap like hits her just treats her terribly and one day a criminal thing goes bad and she ends up meeting a band of people who will then form like this found family group of people who try to overthrow the final empire. Through that, we'll get to meet everybody in that band of people. We have Kelsier, who is a very um, sarcastic, kind of grungy guy who is not afraid of violence, but is very loving and tenderhearted at the core and is very passionate about overth overthrowing this very unethical and horrible government. Brandon Sanderson does a lot of commentary. I don't know. I was going to say, I don't know if he realizes, but he's like a freaking genius. He does realize there's a lot of commentary about capitalism and religion and class in this story. And Kelsey is like, this is fucked up. Like, I'm like, this is messed up. These people should not be treated like this. And I want to end it. It's messed up. And so he gets together a bunch of people and they start to plan to do that. So... We have Ven and Kelsier. Ven is Mistborn. That's the part that you find out about 60 pages in. The magic system in this world completely revolves around metals and swallowing metals. So some people can swallow one metal and use that power. Powers that range from manipulating people's emotions, making them feel happy, or making them rebel up, or soothing them, making them feel calm. So some people can do that. I'm not going to be able to remember all the powers and metals right now, but some people can like push and pull on things, which gives them flight. Um, some people can burn pature, which is a metal in this world that makes them really strong and able to endure a lot of pain without collapsing. Um, there are consequences to all these metals. And then there are people called Mistborn who can do all the metals. And you'll learn way, way more about that than what I'm telling you. That's just the tip of the iceberg that you find out in the very beginning of the book, which is why I think Neve is right, that it's not a spoiler, but I wanted to warn people ahead of time in case they're very sensitive about that. So that's kind of the setup of the world. And these people join together to attempt to overthrow the final empire, which is what this empire is called. You also meet someone named Breeze and you'll meet Ham and just and Spook, which you'll know him by another name at first. And then he gets a nickname called Spook. I can't pronounce his actual name that he's given. And there's a story behind that as well. But pretty early on, he gets a nickname called Spook. And you'll meet so many amazing, amazing characters in this found family story. So the basis that you need to know going in, if you know nothing about it, is that they will join together to try to overthrow this government. That is part of the point, but there is so much more past that. So I tell people all the time, book one is just a foundation of the story. So even if you've read book one and didn't love it, please, please, please do not give up and read books two and three, because this is just a foundation of what is to come. The events in this book, you will be reminded of, and they will build upon in books two and three. What a crazy concept, right? But something that I found in fantasy books is that we'll have a book one and something will happen or there'll be an event and then books two and all the other books seem almost irrelevant to book one. Like something else will happen in the world where like we'll briefly mention book one. Maybe I haven't read enough adult fantasy. Maybe I've been reading too much YA fantasy. But I felt like Brandon Sanderson did a spectacular job of truly building upon every tiny element in book one. Also, Brandon Sanderson pays so much attention to detail. Like every little thing that happens, he there will be comments on. It'll be brought up later. You'll be able to see it in the characters. There is all showing and no telling in this book. It's amazing. I loved that. I, I felt like I was truly getting to know the characters. And by book three, I felt like I actually like knew them. And so I sort of knew what to expect when they were on page. 
And I know that sounds like, oh, isn't every book like that? But you like, like you truly feel like these are your friends. Like you, you know them because you have gained so much knowledge and understanding about them on such a deeper level. Oh my gosh. It's so freaking good guys. Like, please read this book. It's, I can't imagine books better than this. Everybody says the Stormlight Archives are better, which I will be reading later this year as I make my way through all the Cosmere books. That's what I'm doing if you're new here and I forgot to mention that. There's a link in the in the description below to the Discord where we are reading through all of the Cosmere starting with Mistborn. And so I can't eat, my brain like starts to break when I think about how in the world could there be better fantasy books than this? But everybody says the Stormlight Archives are better. So I guess I'll find out at some point. By the time you make it to book three and it wraps up era one, you will be so attached to these characters and feel like you truly know them, which is just such an amazing, amazing experience. The end of book three, you are going to go through so much in this era, in era one, and you will be filled with so much hope. This is such a story about, there's a lot of commentary in religion, and I am agnostic, so I believe in a higher power. I don't know what higher power. I don't fall into organized religion. I think even if you're atheist and don't believe in religion or a higher power at all, there is so much to be said about faith and hope in humanity. And when you feel like all hope is lost, when you feel like there's nothing to live for, Brandon Sanderson really challenges that viewpoint and shows that like humans and people and life can be so crappy, but if we hold out hope and we hold out faith and we truly look for every tiny, small, good thing in life, then things can get better. And that is such a message that I've never felt or seen in books ever that this really changed like my view of the world. I think I read this at such an amazing and important time in my life that it taught me such a life lesson and gave me as a human so much hope. I'm just so grateful that I read these books and I hope that you will too. There's some dark humor. You'll get some like, you'll get some, there, there's some funny moments to break up so much of the darkness. And there is a romance in the book. There's a few different romances. There's one main romance, which I will not spoil, but that the, the commentary on like relationships and going through war, like, oh, it was so good. Brandon Sanderson really challenges you too on like morally gray characters. The main characters in this book are very morally gray. They do some things that you're like, wow, that's kind of messed up. But there's so much reasoning. Like you feel like you understand why they're doing it. Like undeniably so. It's like, like I feel like sometimes like in this book, he showed that sometimes you have to do something bad for the greater good, which is like such a moral dilemma that I'm not here to like say is right or wrong. But he like puts you in so many like moral dilemmas where you're like, truly thinking, what what would I do in this situation? Like, is he doing the right thing or is he not? There's so many beautiful scenes in the world. I mean, this is a world in which ash is falling from the sky. And like, oh, there's it's just so good. Like, please, please, please read this series if you're at all interested. And I would love to talk to you about it. If you want to join the Discord and message me about the series, there also are forums in there where you can see everything that we've talked about as we're going through all of the books. Spoilers are marked with clear locations of where they're at in the stories based on chapters. Just oh, so good. I really, really love these books. I guess another thing that I wanted to say is that all of the books are different. So in book one, we have this sort of throwing, overthrowing the government sort of arc. In book two, there's kind of like a heist story uh, and also like what it means to go to war and if you would have told me before i read these books that they're about like war i would have been like i'm not interested in that at all like that sounds so boring to me but the political intrigue is so good and it also makes you like think about how when people go to a war it's just drama like it starts with just drama either colonialization or somebody's mad at somebody or somebody wants something that somebody else has uh, i.e russia and the ukraine right now like it, it just shows like that that war is so unreasonable and like useless. And these characters get put into situations in which like, I don't know, I felt like these books were so eye-opening in that regard, but the political intrigue is really, really good. This was sort of an entry to, in, for me into um, adult fantasy. So if that's something that you haven't explored yet and you were wondering like, if you would like it. I think this is a good starting point. It really opened up my mind to that to the point where now I'm going to read a Game of Thrones because I've heard that the political intrigue is even better than in these books. And so I'm very, very excited to do that. 
So anyways, ADHD. Book one is like overthrowing a government sort of story. Book two is like a high story. And then book three is sort of like a commentary on religion, faith, hope. Um, everything ties together, but it, it really is like an ending sort of story. And you do feel like there is an ending of an era. It makes sense why these books are separated into era one and era two, at least to me. And, and I feel like it really wraps up well while also leaving room to be like, huh, I wonder what happens next. But you do feel like you're wrapped up with these characters and this character arc. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. If you do read these books, I talk in depth about my thoughts as I go through them. I took notes. And then I read you guys the notes and sort of commented on what I was thinking as I was reading them. You can find those in the reading vlogs. I think this video will be up before my Hero of Ages Hero of Ages reading vlog is up. That will be up in a few days. It's already filmed. It just won't be edited until after this. So if you're waiting for that, it is coming. Um, and I talk about the ending and how I felt about the ending. So if I have convinced you to read these books or you were already thinking about doing it and you want to know my thoughts, they're out there for you. And I would love to hear from you guys as well. I guess the moral of the story is, let me hold up all the books and these pretty, pretty covers. The moral of the story is these were all five stars. I don't say this lightly, but they truly changed like my worldview and my opinion and probably set too high of a standard for adult fantasy, which is why I'll be sticking to the Cosmere for a while. Um, but I know there are other great fantasy books out there too. Like Brandon Sanderson's not the whole complete story, but I think it really ignited my love for these kinds of stories and the commentary, like the social and political commentary that comes with these sort of stories. I really, really, oh, I really, really loved. Like I cannot express enough the amount that I love these stories. I did tear up at the end. I felt so many emotions. I'll be thinking about these stories forever. And I don't know how my brain is going to handle the rest of the Cosmere, but I'm going to do it because I'm like so excited and can't wait to find out what else is in them. So if you have any questions or you want to know things, just drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them spoiler free. I hope this video has given you guys my thoughts and opinions on the story and I sort of set up what the story is about without telling you too much. Um, but you can get what to expect emotionally from these stories. And I feel like that's why we read and what that's what I'm always looking for in reviews. So I hope that you got that. Um, the magic system is kind of complex, but anything that you need to know, you will be reminded of even into book three. Oh, and one last thing about the world building, world building. Brandon Sanderson is very known for world building and I understand why now. I think a lot of times in fantasy novels, people set up these worlds and then they make the rules and then they just tell you about the rules. Brandon Sanderson like engages you in storytelling around the world. Like the world in of itself is almost like a character that you're engaging with and trying to understand about all the way through book three. Like there's mysteries, there's plot twists. Oh my gosh, there's so many plot twists that you're just like, what? You, like like better than a thriller plot twist. Like Brandon Sanderson, like you fooled me. Like you truly fooled me. And oh, I just love it so much. And I hope that I've sold you guys. And I hope that my excitement has gotten you excited. That's the whole point of booktube and reading books. And yeah. So I'm gonna go edit this video now and I'm gonna go for a run and I'll see you guys in the Discord or in the comments or in the next video. I hope you're having a great time wherever you're at and enjoying your reading. Bye.